So, daily intermittent and fasting. What diet is the best diet to combine with daily intermittent fasting so you can get the greatest results from it and whatever benefits you are looking to specifically gain from it. And dependent on who you ask, you're gonna get a different answer pretty much every single time. So the best way that I can answer this is so many different diets, such as Blake Horton's diet, which is a one meal a day diet, which I'm gonna show you some images of each different diet that I'm gonna be showing you maybe some short video clips as well. He got amazing results with this. He tried so many different diets and he lost around 60 pounds of excess of body fat, so he could no longer be obese and actually gain and maintain the body that he desired. And he's been doing this for years and years and years. His blood work is on point. It is really, 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 really good. So that is working for him. And then you've got people like Jordan Peterson and his daughter, Michaela Peterson, that massively promote the carnivore diet. She specifically had so many different chronic health issues, tried so many different diets, and so many other things to heal herself, it didn't work. And then she switched to the carnivore diet and it healed all of her health issues. And then she managed to reach a high state of health within her mind and body holistically. Then there's diets such as the 80-10-10 diet, which is a high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein, raw vegan diet that's massively promoted by Douglas Graham. And so many people that I have met, and this is one of the diets that I embarked on years ago to heal so many of my health issues. And so many people that I've mentioned that I've talked to as well, have healed so many different health issues on this diet. And then there's other different diets, such as the ketogenic diet that is massively promoted by Dr. Jason Fung, and he finds time and time again that this works really well for reversing type two diabetes and helping people get amazing weight loss results and a whole host of other different benefits. And then you've got people such as Dr. McDougall that promotes the starch solution diet, which is a starch based plant-based vegan diet even more specifically. And he has reversed heart disease in so many different people and so many other different health issues as well. And he's found that it gives people amazing weight loss results. So yes, there is just so many diets in today's world and it can get very confusing as to which one is gonna be the best for you to do. And when you're on the intermittent fasting diet, obviously it's not just a specific diet where you only eat certain foods with the intermittent fasting diet. You do intermittent fasting combined with a specific diet. There's so many different people that combine intermittent fasting daily with so many different types of diets and so many people get such amazing results time and time again. And just because someone tells you a diet is working for them with intermittent fasting, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you because we all have different genetics and we are just not all the same. So what may work for me may not work for you. So what I always say is do trial and elimination. Try a specific diet that you're drawn to that is in line with your ethics and your morals and you know that you could sustain long term because if you cannot sustain a diet long term and you can only do it short term, there's no point in doing it. Like these yo-yo diets, when people get on these very restrictive diets, lose some weight, gain all the weight back, normally gain more weight back, and then they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's all about finding a diet that you can stay and have a long period of time to get whatever types of benefits that you want to get from it. So if you wanna try out the ketogenic diet, try it out, see how you feel. It might be good to get some blood tests done after being on any different diets and get your blood work done prior to see if it's maybe affecting your negative way. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just go by how you feel. Your body knows whether something is working for you and you can just be as mindful as you possibly can and use your head as well to just be like, hmm, how am I feeling? Am I noticing improvements or am I noticing that I'm not feeling as good? And obviously make sure when you switch to whatever type of diet you're gonna to switch to that you make sure that you research it as much as possible because there's a lot of people that switch to a diet 
and they say it didn't work when they were not doing it exactly how they needed to to make it work the most effectively for them so don't always necessarily blame that and some people don't really get on with tolerating fiber some people have issues with histamines in foods and other various anti-nutrients that can be in so many different plant foods and other foods as well so dependent on how your gut microbiome is and the type of bacteria strains you have within your gut will be a huge factor for if a specific diet will work for you or not even specifically. So a lot of people find they can have issues with certain plant foods and they can blame the plant foods but they haven't got optimal gut microbiome and they've got a compromised overall digestive system. And then you could start to resolve your digestive issues, optimize your gut microbiome and then you could eat certain foods that you couldn't before and you could be absolutely fine eating them. And some signs whether a diet is working for you or not. Digestion is a huge one. Are you constipated? Do you have diarrhea? Do you have optimal bowel movements and a healthy amount of bowel movements throughout the day? Do your bowel movements smell? If it smells, you've got diarrhea, constipation, then it's a very sure sign that it's not necessarily the best diet for you because you want your digestion to be as best as possible. And digestive issues are one of the main things that contribute to a whole host of health issues and sickness short term and long term and there has been multiple different scientific studies out there to show that around 90 percent of the serotonin which is a neurotransmitter is produced within the gut and this is a neurotransmitter that is key for having optimal mental health and mood and happiness and a whole host of other cognitive and mental health benefits as well. So you really want to make sure you have the best digestion if you want to feel the best that you can mentally and physically, holistically. The second one is how do you feel? Do you have good energy levels throughout the day or do you find that it's going up and down or when you eat you just feel really crappy afterwards? If you're not feeling very good after eating your meal, you're not feeling energized from it, then you may be overeating or it may be that your body just doesn't like the foods that you're eating. So that's another way to tell whether you should be eating the foods that you're eating, the diet that you're eating. The third one, how do you feel mentally and cognitively did your brain function very well throughout the day are you very alert and focused or do you have loads of brain fog and just not be able to function to the full capacity of what your mind can function with all of its different cognitive abilities and how are your moods do you have massive mood swings throughout the day are you feeling angry or anxious so yeah they are some of the main things but just be as mindful as possible and what you can even do when you switch to a new diet Get yourself a notepad or a physical one specifically or one on your phone, either one is absolutely fine. And write down how you're feeling every single day and know is certain positive effects that are induced within you on the diet, on a certain negative effects as well. And just keep a whole log of what is going on for you. And then you can look over it after a certain period of time and really work out whether the diet is worth sticking to or not. But what I'm gonna say is most people are gonna notice whether a diet is affecting them very positively or negatively. So what I'd recommend is that any diet you're gonna to switch to, like I said, do as much research as you can on the diet that you're going to switch to, make sure you're doing it as correctly as possible. And if you do run into some issues, research the issues up online, maybe join some support groups on Facebook on the specific diet that you're on, and you might find some solutions to whatever is going on for you on your diet, and you can actually resolve it and stick to the diet. And just give your diet a good go for at least around a 30 day period. This is going to be a good length of time to really get you to work out whether the diet is a diet that is going to help you reach your goals and make you feel the exact way that you want to feel or not because what i've seen with people time and time again they learn about a new diet it makes sense to them logically as to why they are switching to that diet they see so many people getting so many benefits from the research that they look online all these testimonials other things yet they're not feeling good with it yet they continue keep doing it for months and months and months or years and years and years and i've done this in the past many years ago and it just wasn't working for me and i've seen them not work for people time and time again but they keep dragging out longer and longer and longer and longer and longer because they've been so programmed with certain information from specific teachers that teach whatever diet they've switched to 
and yeah it's really dangerous territory so don't stick it out too long but stick it out long enough around 30 days so you can give it a good go and see if it's going to work for you or not and last but not least all of the diets that i've mentioned that you could buy in with into and one last thing that's very important for me to mention i mentioned many different diets that you could eat some are way more healthy than others and when i say healthier some of them include way more junk foods rather than natural whole foods and what i'd say is if you're someone that wants to maximize your longevity and health holistically that you do eat the most micronutrient rich foods and minimize the amount of processed foods that you're eating but if you're someone that just cares about having a high level of sports performance and amazing weight loss benefits any of those diets are going to be absolutely fine so you need to ask yourself what am I looking for long term for the rest of my life with whatever specific diet that you are going to combine with intermittent fasting? Which I'm not someone that just always sticks to clean whole foods at the moment. I'm eating the IIFYM, which is an if it fits your macros diet to actually eat an abundance of calories where I'm in a calorie surplus to gain extra muscle mass. But a lot of time in the past with intermittent fasting, I've ate a lot of junk foods and ate a lot of whole foods. So you don't necessarily need to be really, really strict all the time of eating really clean. You can have some freedom with the way that you're eating. I used to be someone that was super, super strict. And then I got to a point where I was like, yeah, I can experiment with this thing at a time and this and that and that. And if it doesn't work for me, then I discontinue doing it. So not just being so strict and rigid. But if you feel that you need to be very strict and rigid and not divert from the diet that you're eating completely, then that's absolutely fine as well. But it's just that option there because a lot of people can find sticking to a very healthy diet for the rest of their life. Can just be one of these things where they may want to indulge, but they don't because they're gonna feel really bad about it. But a great thing that I found with intermittent fasting, when I started intermittent fasting over two years ago, certain foods, I'd eat them, and they would make me feel like garbage and have a negative effect on my blood sugar levels, and my energy levels, and my mental health. But yeah, since I've been on this intermittent fasting journey, so many foods that used to affect me in those ways and many other negative ways, they just don't anymore, which is absolutely amazing. And I have talked about this in many videos before, and the reason why I believe this happens is because whilst you're in that fasted state, it's massively reducing inflammation and it induces an effect known as autophagy within the body which eats up cells that are not functioning so well recycles them and creates new ones it also eats up undigestible proteins and gets them to then be created into new usable amino acids to repair the tissues and support muscle growth and hair growth and many other different amazing benefits as well and there's many other different benefits that intermittent fasting induces within us all as proven through so many different scientific studies out there that you can look up online that can just make it so you could eat certain foods like i said that i can now that maybe used to affect you in a negative way when you used to eat multiple meals a day and it will not affect you in any negative ways whatsoever which is really amazing because i used to wish that i could eat certain foods that I like to eat, which I knew were just not good for me to eat because every time I did, I would just feel absolutely awful in every single way that you possibly could imagine. And who knew that I'd find something that allowed me to indulge on certain junk foods and other various things that are not the healthiest foods possible and still feel really good from them, which is really, really amazing. And you can lose weight at the same time, which is amazing. Just like Blake Horton, eating around 4,500 calories a day and just obviously eating one meal a day, which I mentioned earlier, it's a one meal a day diet and losing around 60 pounds of weight, which is wow. So many people believe that you need to eat very extreme calorie restriction diets to lose weight when it's not necessarily the truth. When you're, at least from what I've seen, when combining different types of diet, even junk food diets such as the Blake Horton one meal a day diet and yeah, still get amazing weight loss results when you're eating an abundance of 
calories. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also I'm gonna put a link down below for the sponsor of this video, Clean Machine, which they do some of the best plant-based fitness nutrition supplements, which are some of the cleanest in the world with nothing toxic added to them. I personally use their products. There'll be a 20% coupon code down below and a link for the website in case you're interested in them. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down. And please share this video with anyone else that you think would love to hear about what I've talked to you today about with you in this video specifically today. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more videos from me on specific topics such as intermittent fasting, dry fasting, prolonged water fasting, weight loss, calisthenics, and many other different videos to teach you a whole host of valuable, effective, information to help you go in the direction to gain and maintain the body desire, the fitness levels and the energy levels like I have managed to and many other people that have followed my information consistently over time to get those results and many other different amazing ones as well. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, if you wanna be notified when those new videos are uploaded, when you click the subscribe button, click that bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise you're not gonna be notified of when those new videos are uploaded. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.